Hello. Today we're going to look at wave functions and in particular to understand why I chose the wave function that I did in my video on the Schrodinger wave equation. It's also worth explaining why we need a wave function at all. The reason we need a wave function is basically to understand why an electron going round the nucleus doesn't simply spiral into the nucleus and annihilate the atom. That is really the foundation of quantum mechanics. The explanation is that you have to think of the electron not just as a particle, but also as a wave. And if you want to think of it as a wave, you need a wave function. That is why when I did the video on deriving the Schrodinger equation, I took as a basic wave this form psi equals e to the i kx minus omega t. I should just explain what i is. i is the square root of minus 1. Now there is no solution to the square root of minus 1. No two numbers multiplied together can ever make minus 1 because any identical numbers multiplied together always make a positive number. So the square root of minus 1 is what we call an imaginary term. It doesn't exist. But it's used in physics to solve a problem like this. Supposing you end up with a result that says that a squared equals minus b squared. There is no solution to that. But if you introduce i, you can say that a equals ib, because then a squared is i squared b squared, and i squared is minus 1. Now, for those of you who don't know, there is a basic mathematical form, which I'm not going to derive, but it's well established, that if you take psi equals e to the i alpha x, that is one and the same as cosine alpha x plus i sine alpha x. And that is clearly a wave term because cosine waves oscillate, and so do sine waves. Cosine waves oscillate between, between plus 1 and minus 1. If you want them to oscillate between greater amplitudes, then you simply have to put an amplitude term A in front of the general term for the waves. Let's consider the real part of that wave, which is the cosine term, and we are using cosine of kx minus omega t. As I say, that is an oscillating wave. But what does it mean? Well, let's begin by simply looking at the cosine of kx. I am defining k as 2 pi divided by lambda where lambda is the wavelength of the wave. Here is the wave, and the wavelength is the distance between two successive peaks. So, we can rewrite cosine of kx as cosine of 2 pi over lambda times x. What happens when x equals lambda? Then the term becomes cosine 2 pi, and that equals 1. And so, for every x is 2 pi, that is 2 pi, 4 pi, 6 pi, and so on, the wave will have completed one complete wavelength and will look something like this. That is known as a standing wave. It doesn't go anywhere. If we now take the second part, cosine kx minus omega t, this is what's known as a travelling wave, because the wave will actually move at velocity v to the right. I'll tell you what v is in a little while. Where do the peaks fall in this wave? Well, the wave will reach its maximum amplitude when kx minus omega t is zero, because when kx minus omega t is zero, cosine of zero 
is 1, and that's the maximum amplitude. Unless, of course, you have this A amplitude term in front of the whole thing. So when kx minus omega t equals 0, that is the same as saying kx equals omega t, or x divided by t is omega divided by k. But what is x divided by t? x is distance, t is time, and distance divided by time is velocity, v. And so this moving wave is travelling to the right with a velocity given by omega over k. But what is omega? Omega is the velocity in radians and is 2 pi times the frequency. What is k? k, as I've already said, is 2 pi over lambda. So omega divided by k is 2 pi f divided by 2 pi over lambda, which is simply f lambda, which is the frequency times the wavelength. And frequency times wavelength is the velocity. Frequency is the number of waves that pass a particular point per second, and lambda is the wavelength of each distance from crest to crest. And so f times lambda is the number of waves which pass per second multiplied by the wavelength of those waves, and that gives you the velocity per second. We can also say more about k. k is 2 pi over lambda. But from my video on the reason for quantum mechanics, you will see that we derive the formula lambda equals h over p, where p is the momentum. So k is 2 pi divided by lambda, which means is divided by h over p, and that is simply p over h bar, where h bar is a new version of Planck's constant, h over 2 pi. And that means that p equals k h bar. h bar is a constant, so k is in essence a measure of momentum. So in this formula for psi equals e to the i kx minus omega t, we can say that k is 2 pi over lambda, but it is also p over h bar, and it therefore gives us an indication of the wavelength of the wave and the momentum of the wave. Omega is 2 pi times the frequency, and thus gives us an idea of the frequency of the wave, and the velocity of the wave is omega divided by k, and that tells you how fast the wave is moving to the right.